Listen, alcohol is just out in 2024. There is a rising trend of going alcohol-free or being sober curious, and alcohol the truth is, it's just bad for you and can famously impair your sex life. So if you're looking for another way to unwind, relax, or just have fun, I cannot recommend Vaya's THC gummies enough. Vaya has gummies for every occasion, whether it's to improve your sleep. I love their sleep gummies. I take them everywhere. Your mood or your focus. They even have an aphrodisiac gummy called High Love to boost my arousal levels. High Love has a unique blend of cannabinoids and aphrodisiac exotic herbs that are known for their libido enhancing effects. So I've been using Vaya for a while now and I absolutely love them. They're a super trusted company. They use premium hemp, natural ingredients, and they're known for their premium indoor THCA flower. All their products are made here in the U.S. They got quick and discreet shipping to all 50 states so you can all enjoy them, not to worry, and also super affordable. So head over to viahemp.com and use code EMILY at checkout to save 15% off your order. That's V-I-I-A-H-E-M-P.com. Use code EMILY at checkout for 15% off your order and let me know what you think. Urinary tract infections are extremely common. Around 1 in 2 women and 1 in 20 men will get a UTI in their lifetime. Plus, once you've had one UT challenge, you're way more susceptible to another in the future. That's why you just need Just Thrive's UT123. This product can actually prevent UTIs while maintaining your urinary tract health. UT123 targets both immediate and long-term relief. We've all heard to drink cranberry juice for your urinary tract, but did you know that for the full effects, you need the whole cranberry? Not just juice, but the skin, flesh, and even the seeds. Well, UT123 uses superior ingredients that utilizes the whole fruit. This supplement truly is the full package. So if you're someone who struggles with the constant urge to urinate, a burning feeling when you pee, pelvic pain, or just want to be proactive in your urinary health, Just Thrive is for you. Just Thrive is so confident you'll love their product that there is a 100% money-back guarantee on every purchase made through JustThriveHealth.com. And for a limited time, you can save 20% off site-wide at JustThriveHealth.com with promo code SEXWITHEMILY. That's JustThriveHealth.com and use code SEXWITHEMILY for 20% off your order. You're going to love it. You got a boyfriend? Because uh, my man E here, he just got his heart broken. He thinks you're kind of cute. The girl's got to have her standards. Oh, my. Do women know about shrinkage? Isn't it common knowledge? What do you mean? Like laundry? It shrinks? Can we not talk about sex so much? Are you kidding me? Oh, my God. I feel so good. Being bad feels pretty good. But you know, Emily's not the kind of girl you just play with. You're listening to Sex with Emily. We're talking about sex relationships and everything in between. For more information, go to sexwithemily.com right now. A lot of you are there right now watching the show live, so thanks everyone for tuning in and watching us. We appreciate that. And thanks everyone for becoming Friends with Benefits members. You know, we're still giving away free memberships. If you want three months free of Sex with Emily, all you have to do is like our Facebook fan page, Facebook page, and uh, we randomly select people every day to win three months. Awesome. So go do that now. And if you already like the page, you're good to go. And you also get 30 minutes free of Fire TV, F-Y-R-E TV. It is the Netflix of porn. If you haven't checked out Fire TV, go there now. You will love it. And um, I'm really excited for today's show. If you want to call in at all, you can. It's 415-992-7392. We prefer you – I mean, you can't call from Skype. It's not that we prefer it. You can't call from Skype. Right, Menace? Yeah. It won't work. Don't do that. Call from your cell phone. Call from your yeah, office phone. You have a phone. Call from your boss's phone. Just call the phone number. Call the phone number. <laughs> And today's show is, um, we're going to be talking about confessions from a sex club. My intern went to a sex party, a play party with her boyfriend, apparently at my suggestion, which I didn't remember that was my suggestion. Anyway, we'll get into all that later, but she's going to talk about her first experience. Her boyfriend's going to be calling in. They're going to talk about what happened and what went down. Wow. What went down. That sounds very interesting. And it sounds like something you would suggest. I know, but I thought I, I I figured I didn't think I directly suggested, but I guess I did. But we'll get I'm into sure that. I'm sure you did. And then we've got the uh, the winner of our contest. What would you give up for amazing sex? We're gonna announce the winners. We've got sex in the news. We've got emails. We've got a lot going on today. That's Happy good. Happy Tuesday. How was your day yesterday? Um, what, honestly, do you want to know? Honestly, yeah. My day was like like the show. Everything was fine, and then I went home and met with my bookkeeper for two and a half hours. Oh, that's fun. It's depressing. Yeah. Not that it's the bad. The dog destroyed your day, what, first off. The I'll dog, tell you that. The dog came to the show yesterday. If you want to check out yesterday's show, she was on Please camera. Please don't. She don't. was so cute. 
She oh. was really cute on camera. Yeah, but She's if a natural. people were actually listening to the podcast, they'd oh, be annoying. like, what the hell is going on? I know, on? my dog ate her like six leash. But no, I read my bookkeeper, and that's just like numbers and charts and flow charts. It's not my thing, not a number person. I mean, it's all mm-hmm. good. Money's fun, whatever. But yeah. it was, that's what I did. And then I worked until 1 a.m. and fell asleep. Super fun. Sweet. What about you? I, uh... Oh, you went to see... No, that was another night. No, I went to... A secret meeting. I can't really talk about. Oh, no, come no, on. seriously. Uh, secret meeting. I'm sworn to secrecy. I can't. I can't say what I was. So you're doing. just teasing me now because you no, know. No, no, gonna... no, no. I can tell you later. I just can't tell you on the show. But Ooh. I was. Yeah, I went to. Uh, Who was there? People. I can't. <laughs> What'd you eat? Uh, there was no food, but there was alcohol. Of course. But, uh, yeah, it was at. It was on top of a penthouse. Uh, even it was in a penthouse. Nice. Suite. Yeah. So it was, it was cool. you were with fancy people. Yeah, I was in like industry people, but not people. Did they that have were the shitty like kind of alcohol the... that you drink, or just really nice alcohol? Oh, they had nice alcohol. Oh, uh, were you bummed? It was too classy for me. Yeah. Was it too classy? It Maybe was. It was very up. classy though. It was, was it a work secret meeting, or was it a uh, nothing involving my company? No. Oh, another company. Yeah, it was another company. Yeah, and they were just like mixing, you know, artistic and media people together. And, wow, are you yeah. making a sex tape? I am a uh, highly produced sex tape. <laughs> yeah, I wish. No, but it was a really good time. There was like this uh, huge rooftop, so you can walk. Oh, on the it was rooftop a nice night, right? See all over right. the city and stuff like that. Wasn't yeah. it a nice night, kind of? It was a nice night. Yeah, yeah it was good times. I, I took a couple pictures. If you follow me on Instagram, I, I took one oh, picture. Follow Menace on Instagram. How do you do that, White Menace? Uh, yeah, everything white mess. Everything's white mess. But yeah, it was a good time. Uh, I was I was giggling just before the show because this morning I was doing something that was kind of funny. What'd you do? Um, <laughs> if you do say so on yourself. My, on my blog at whitemenace.com, like, I come up with these top tens. And then uh, in the Bay Area, I said, oh, these are the top ten taquerias that I okay. like, right? People really enjoy them. They, right. like, they People like check them out in the thousands. I do not know why. Right. But people were into our people, Mexican food. You know, food is food is a common ground. Big Everybody has here. to eat. Totally. Anyways, but it got me thinking about like tacos and stuff like that. <laughs> it got and, me thinking about tacos. <laughs> and there was a taco on the Taco Bell menu that I loved in the late nineties. Okay. And it was called the Four Alarm Double Decker Taco. <laughs> And they took it off the menu. Okay. And I've been upset ever since, since like I think it was ninety nine right? that they took it off. Okay. It's been off the menu that long. It's a long time. I, I went through the company directory and I started calling people to try to bring it back. That's what I was doing this morning. Seriously? Yes. You, things aren't that busy around the office, huh? No, it's just like sometimes I just get obsessed with these things. And I, I know, just you're have like, to get it. I just have to get it out of the way. Like, I have to you let them start, know. Did you tweet them and Taco Bell? And I everything? did tweet Taco Bell. They haven't tweeted me back Maybe you didn't do that. What but these it? are like the weird like, things That's I what get you obsessed do? That's with. That's hilarious. I yeah. love it. It was but called the what? The four, the four alarm double decker taco. Oh my god! I'm sure that was like a heart attack on a plate. That it's, sounds really it's good. 2011, I still, and I'm still thinking. You're about still it. thinking about the taco. Yeah, yeah I am. Um, Taco Bell and I don't have a great relationship. Um, I worked at a bar my four years in college. I was a cocktail waitress at this mm-hmm. bar, and there was a Taco Bell inside yes. of it. Thank God. And so we got free Taco Bell every single night after our shift, mm-hmm. and it was like 2 a.m. and you're drunk, or we yeah. drink during our shift, and um. Because doesn't everyone in college, when you're a cocktail waitress, drink? Yeah, so that's then, not the smart thing to do when you want to make money. It is a smart thing to do. No, it's not. Okay, well, I always made a lot of money. It was the best job I ever had. I always think yeah. I should just go back to that because <laughs> it was like dollar pitcher night. You get yeah. a dollar and then people give you five. It was awesome. Point is, free Taco Bell for four years always. So I can never eat Taco Bell again. Speaking about tacos. Yes. And you <laughs> this is so sexy. Uh, Sex with tacos how many with of your How many of your uh, patrons did you go home with? Um... How many of the guys? I met are, a ton of guys yeah, in college. I, I have to imagine. say, I was like, it was the one bar. It was called Rick's. It was in Ann Arbor, Michigan, mm-hmm. where I went to college. I went to University of Michigan, and it was like the one. There was like two bars in the town that were cool, and the Rick's was cool, and they had live music. And I have to say, I met several of my. I was not a go. I never. This is a true statement, and you're not going to believe me. I think, but for the four years I went to college, I think I only had went home with someone that I didn't really know that well one time I did not have sex with them like I made out with them but I never had a one-night stand never randomly hooked up I always had boyfriends from one mm-hmm. year each year I had a different boyfriends. so I but one of the guys I did meet at the bar and then I ended up dating him for a year but I didn't like randomly I, I'm kind of yeah. mad at myself I was a little uptight really believe it or not yeah I was like in college I was just like really 
Yeah, it was more of a, a, a prude, if you will. Well, I, I, uh, I try to think what is the percentage of, you know, because there's always the guys that go out with their friends and they're with right. a bunch of guys and then they see like a hot waitress. Like how many times does it actually where a guy takes that waitress home? I think a lot what, of times. Like, what's the percentage? I think it happened. I don't know what the percentage is, but in, I, I definitely met a million. Like, I met so many guys in college that it was like a joke. It was like, because uh, I was working at the bar. Like, I, I, I met, I, they would call. Like, it just, no, it was, it was <laughs> oh, wow. crazy. Like, it was, I had a lot of men in college. But then I always had a boyfriend. I was always the girl with a boyfriend because I would date him for it. Oh, a mistake. So I feel like I, if I could go back and do over, I would do over college and do more dudes. I would do have more sex. I would not be in the relationships because... And now What's you wouldn't point? want to have your fun now. Because That's you would be why. Over it. I, I, was, I was very much a serial monogamous, like all through like my teens, my 20s. And I just kind of feel like now I'm just like. You didn't, did ha- you didn't get to have your fun. I didn't get to have my fun. So I've been having a lot of fun <laughs> the last 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> it's been awesome. Yeah. yeah. I, I actually. Take, take, most people do hook up at bars in college and go home together, right? Yeah, but see, I went to like an art school, which right. was really a commuter college, a, right. so you never really got to meet anybody. Right, right, right. But I did, I did meet a girl and became friends with her, and then we ended up sleeping together like 10 years later. Okay. But That's a really long It's a really stretch. long according. Yes, you know? courting phase. But I guess it does happen. But oh yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I'm trying to think. I, I don't think no. I never went because I was always so. I think when you're younger too, you're worried about what people are going to think. Everyone mm-hmm. finds out your business. Like, oh, I heard you hooked up with so and so last night. I just didn't want everyone, anyone to ever talk about me, or whatever. But maybe I would have been more open if I wasn't so concerned what people think. But now I really don't care. Yeah. But in college, you care. What? No, nothing. Okay. See, so why you always get distracted when I'm doing? Because I have ADD, else. and yeah. if you're doing something else, I'm going to go yeah. there. Here, we'll stop like the my show. dog. Can you just put that top on top of here? Oh, we're fixing the mic. Okay. So, um, but Sweet. yeah, Thanks. I was, it was the best job ever and, um, free drinking and free boo- free booze and uh-huh. free drinking and, and all that in college for four years. That was best, good. Best job. Yeah. I, I wish, yeah, you would have, you know, slutted it up a little bit more. I know. I, I was not slutty. I've never been slutty <laughs> per se. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, then the other things I have to tell you are, uh, I don't know. We've got news. What else can we talk about? <laughs> For a second, okay. We can get into no. News. What's what's today? Today is Tuesday, is Tuesday. right? Oh, what's going yeah. on with you this Oops. week? <laughs> what's going on with you this week? This week, um, I'm throwing an event on Friday night. Did you get my invite? Oh yeah, I got that email. Yeah, for a woman who's running for mayor of San Francisco. Her name's Joanna Reese, and mm-hmm. I'm supporting her 100 percent to be the next mayor. The elections in November, and I'm throwing her an event in San Francisco at Row from 6:30 to 8:30. If anyone wants to come. Can you like get me hired to be our social media director? Oh, why? She needs help? Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, it's, yeah, Joanna Reese. She's awesome. So I'm doing that on Friday night, and then I'm going to a dinner party tonight. The guy I've been dating is having a dinner mm-hmm. party at his house with some peeps. Classy. No, not like that. He's not, he's not like that. But um, with his roommates, who are awesome. Let me guess. You're helping with the entire meal. Yeah, right. Nothing. The guy that you're dating, you're going to help him. No, he cooks. The... I don't ever, I never cook. They, every guy I date cooks. Okay. Okay. So then, and then tomorrow. At least tomorrow, try. Are you gonna, wait, like, what else am I doing? You can go pick up a pie. And no, I can't. I'll, I'm you know, gonna, cheesecake factory. I can't get, get away with this shit anymore because everyone knows that I don't do anything okay. like that. Yeah, but at least go get something. Oh, and then tomorrow night I'm going to this really fun thing. I'm just thinking my thing. Go get okay, something. I don't I'll care bring about, wine. That's lame. Like I'll get bring, something to eat. Like, a, like an cookies? appetizer or something. No. An appetizer? Dessert? I love bringing Make an effort. God damn it. Like, okay, okay, okay. What should I do? What, really, what should I bring? At least go to Whole Foods and get some. I will. Food. There's a Whole Foods right across okay. from my house. Get some like some pastries or some snacks or like oh, cheese and crackers and stuff like that. Okay, good. Cheese and crackers. <laughs> At least cheese and crackers. <laughs> well, it's just casual. It's him and his two roommates and their friends and he's yeah. I don't know. I would. I I wouldn't. It, are you're hanging out with them for the first time, or you know you met them? Before? I've met I've met them before. Yeah, but I don't know. You do, I shouldn't show up my lame ass self, is what you're saying. Yeah, if I my won't. buddy's bringing over his girl, she better be bringing something like a pie or something like that. You know, a pie. Yeah. What was your pie posting the other day? Didn't you do post about? Oh, I did a uh, post about pie facts. Facts about pie. You know, back pies go all the way back to the Egyptian times. No, I did not know yeah, that. They, yeah, you should read my blog. You learn a lot. Facts about pies, facts about tacos. Yeah. I'm really going to read your blog more often. You should. I'm going to 
yeah rss <laughs> feed that yeah. whatever you do <laughs> but i'm just saying like i i would kind of judge her a little bit i'm like you oh, would this, you'd be like, like that cheap ass bitch showed up with nothing I'm but like, her this fork. bitch is so lame <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I mean, everyone knows I don't cook. It's kind of a thing. And um, it's funny. No, I've hung out there before. And his roommate's always trying to teach me that she's she's always like, did you did you want me to show you how to make the uh, the bacon? Like if we're making bacon in the morning. Yeah, and you're like, no. Nah. I'm like, no, I'm cool. I'm good. I'm good. But I'll have some of that bacon. Come on, so lame. They're probably talking so much shit about you. No, they're not. Man, yeah. No one cares if someone can cook or not in this day and age. Yeah, they do. Who? What planet do you live what on? What planet do you live on? <laughs> I live on Earth. Unlike yourself, I've never learned to cook. I do other things. I have I know, other things. I know, but I'm saying you don't. I'm not saying you oh, have to you're going to traumatize me again because this happened. I was watching one of the old shows from June when you're like, <gasps> Menace said to me, <laughs> What? He was like, What do you bring to the table in a relationship? Yeah. You don't cook. You don't, whatever else I don't do. And you were mm. like, And then I had to call exes and find out what I brought to the table. I'm just saying they were tonight very short should, conversations. I'm saying, <laughs> I'm saying tonight you should uh, you should bring something to I'll the table. I'll step it up. I'll step it up for you. Dude, don't bring some lame ass bottle of wine. Oh, I'm gonna bring a bottle of wine for sure. Yeah, but bring something on top of that. I will. I will. Okay. okay. Good. Phew. Now I'm all stressed out. Thanks. Perfect. Love that. Okay. Right. Should we get into some news? Yes. Feedback at sexwithemily.com or call the show if you think that Emily should. <laughs> Bring something other than wine. Exactly. Four one five nine nine two seven three nine two. Uh yeah. It's up on the website too, sexwithemily.com. Oh, sexwithemily.com is so where you want to go mm-hmm. and vote on our poll, which we'll get to in a minute. But here's sex in the news. We have a new poll today. I know you love our polls. Mm-hmm. Uh people cheat less now than they did in nineteen seventy five. Shocked by this. I mm-hmm. thought the numbers kept going up. That's all you ever hear is the numbers go up every mm-hmm. year. It used to be like 60 40 men and now it, then it was 50 50 and now okay the good news keeps rolling in for those concerned about infidelity couples are being more monogamous than they were in the 70s researchers studied 6,000 men and women they found that men and women no matter if gay or straight are much more faithful than our predecessors in 1975 20 percent of straight men reported having sex with someone other than their wife in 2000 that number dropped to 20 percent. maybe people are lying more no i just don't believe why the dramatic decrease in extramarital affairs? The authors say an increase in awareness of HIV and STDs are causing couples to be extra cautious. But I thought like this whole Facebook and it's in, online that people are just cheating more. There's more like everyone's saying there's more opportunity to cheat. Mm-hmm. I just figured that's happening and I'm shocked. But the 70s would have been a rocking time to be having sex. <laughs> I would have been cheating my ass off in the 70s oh because think about it, the birth control pill just came out in mm-hmm. 69. Women were told in 1969, 1968. And that was if that's really kicked off the whole women's lib movement Mm -hmm. is when they got the birth control because until that time they were so nervous they could only have wait till they had sex in marriage because they could get pregnant like Mm -hmm. there weren't like condoms as readily like they they so when they while the women went on the pill they were like oh my god bring it and that's what launched the whole 70s swing in 70s that's where it went all downhill i so wish my parents were single in the 70s my dad used to go to discos every night and (laughs) stuff and they had so much fun did he go to 54 we weren't in New York. We were in Michigan. Damn. I know. But he Michigan. went to the equivalent in Michigan. Really? Yeah. He'd go out with his like, gold chain with his friends <laughs> partying at night. It was so Hell fun. Yeah. That would have been so fun. So people are cheating less now, but I, I don't agree with this study. Well, I think also a lot of people, because it's so in the media now more than ever. I think back then it wasn't really. If people were cheating, it wasn't. There right. wasn't as many tabloids. And you hear, at least on the man side, you're like, oh, that guy just got took for $150 million, you know, right. for cheating. cheating and stuff like that. Right. So I think people are more aware of the risk on top of, you yeah. know, but I think there's things still, that can happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. There is a great risk. But but um, people are doing it. It just seems that people are, I don't know. Like I have a friend who's freaking out right now in the Midwest. She's um, She says that literally, she's been married for 10 years, that literally – six of her friends in the mm. couples that she's in. She's like a nice, like, it's not like, mm-hmm. you're, I know you're going to probably have, make a judgment, but like six of her fr- close friends are all like cheating, breaking up, getting mm-hmm. divorced. We've all been married. And she's like, what? She sent me this email yesterday. She, she called me the other day. She goes, Emily, I have a quick question for you. She's like, what is love? What does love mean? I was like, whoa, what's going on? So mm-hmm. anyway, I just feel like people are cheating, but I guess not as much, which is happy. What did you respond with? What? does love mean I, it was really hard for me i was like uh, uh, i was driving i was like what do you mean what 
is love. Like there's so many different kinds of love. I said there's like friendship love and there's dog love and there's love love. And there's like – I said, are you talking about the romantic love? Because she's like, yes, it doesn't last. I'm like, well, that's a different kind of love. I mean you love your partner. I'm like, I love you. We've been best friends for 20 years. You know, I think there's all different kinds of love. But love I think is like loyalty and trust and and – longevity like knowing someone for a really long mm-hmm. time and love is puppy dogs and <laughs> well when's rainbows. the last time you felt uh love for yeah. a man yeah the butterfly love long time ago long time ago <laughs> butterfly love yeah how many times do you think that's happened in your life oh, such a bummer because you know what <laughs> not that many like like when I was 22, I met this guy and I dated him for like two and a half years and I loved him. Like that was mm-hmm. butter. But I don't know if it's because I was younger and less, less. I feel like it's jaded. easier to fall in love. <laughs> yeah, less jaded. Thank you. I think it's easier to fall in love when you're younger, like because you don't have all the baggage and you're not mm-hmm. jaded and you're not, not that I have so much baggage, like I don't have kids or divorces or anything, but I just think you're, you fall in love more freely. Either that or he was the love of my life and I missed it. No, I don't believe in that. But I, I loved him. Butterflies. It's been a really long time since I felt the butterflies. I've got to say that. And that's what my friend was bemoaning is that she's been with her husband for 10 years and she's like, I'll never feel butterflies again. And she misses that. You think that's her fault? That she doesn't feel butterflies? I yeah. think it's, 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 it's biology. Like we know you're with someone for a long time. You're not going to feel the butterflies anymore. Because you, things change. The chemicals like falling mm-hmm. in love. The butterflies come from like crazy testosterone, estrogen, dopamine, serotonin. Mm-hmm. All this crazy stuff's going on in your body when you're falling in love the first six, 12 months that you're with someone. And that just changes. It dives after a while. So what do you like explain the, the people that are married for 60, 80 years? That they have to – how do I explain that or what, what do mm-hmm. I tell them about it? What, how do you explain that? I explain that they don't have the butterflies anymore but they have this much deeper, stronger, intense – long-lasting love that isn't about butterflies and crazy sex, but it's about commitment and friendship and being there for each other and that stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But you should still like go to get a hotel room every once in a while and <laughs> leave the kids at home. For real. For real. Okay, Iran's hot sex ed DVD. Yesterday, the other day we heard about China's sex ed program. Mm-hmm. The hottest selling item in Tehran pharmacies this summer isn't allergy medicine or vitamin C. It's a sex education CD, DVD. Mm-hmm. The first ever released in the Islamic Republic called Beloved Companion, which has been blazing off the shelves. We've sold hundreds since it was released. Until now, Iranian and foreign films sold on DVD or in theaters have been completely censored. No nudity, no foul language, no nuendo left by the time uh, is left by the time the censors hacked their way through. But now they have this um they got a stamp of approval from the Ministry of Health. Thank God they need sex education there. So uh yeah, So it's exciting. like they're porn. Exactly. Uh unmarried young men and women flirting in parks or cruising around in cars are often picked up by the morality police. Like they're so more like they don't let anything show there, but they're finally doing sex ed, so that's good. That's really cool. Yeah, it's really cool. Having kids lowers a man's testosterone level. Researchers believe that the change in hormone levels men experience when they have children simply make them more family-oriented and interested in caring for the child. Fatherhood and the demands of having a newborn baby require many emotional, physical, uh, psychological, and physical adjustments. So their testosterone dips. That makes sense. But I bet you it goes right back up again. And then they want to start boning everyone and the neighbors. Oh, no. For sure. They want to have sex with their wife and their wife won't have sex with them. Well, only right after they have kids because it's really tough and it hurts in their pain. That's a tough no, you can time wait for like six, six weeks. Six to eight weeks, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, they also suspect it encourages more monogamous behavior. But I don't know. I guess I just know so many people who have reached out to me during that time and they're like, I want to cheat. I want whatever. My wife, like, just mess that's up, my, man. That's the, the mother of my child, man. I know. I don't know. I don't know I why. I know a lot of messed up people. People just can't have the same mentality as I am. Like, when You're it comes a good to. Guy. <laughs> When it just comes to, like, you're together, you're together, I man. know, Menace. Like, you're good. I understand. Hope... When was the time you felt butterflies? Um, I don't know. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been like, a couple when years. when you were engaged? I was engaged, definitely, yeah. Oh. But. <laughs> I want to feel that, like, so excited. Yeah. Anyway, it'll I do, happen. But, like, uh, I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with people these days. What do you mean? They just can't, once they're together with somebody, they just can't be happy yeah. just being together. No, they can't be. 
a lot of people can't be happy with just being together because life is is, is complicated mm-hmm. and we have a lot of needs and desires and we think that one person has to mm-hmm. fill that and when, when our mate isn't filling all those needs we look elsewhere mm-hmm. but really one person can't do it all for you well my deal is I'm you know I'm gonna try my best to make it work and I know you are honey. Not you're gonna be a work. great husband one day <laughs> I, I can't guess. wait <laughs> I, can I go to your wedding yeah for sure right yeah I'm gonna Dude, make a speech my wedding is gonna be ridiculous your wedding is no, gonna be you're gonna be too drunk to make a speech I'm gonna make a great speech Okay, there's a new emotional phone that can moistly kiss your cheek. A what? A phone. An emotional phone. If you see a bunch of people making out with their cell phones on your morning commute in the near future, do not panic. A series of new phone prototypes have just been shown at the Mobile HCI conference in Stockholm, Sweden, that will make whispering sweet nothings to your beloved or panting to your boss mid-run that you're going to go and be a few minutes late mm-hmm. feel a lot more intimate or weird. The emotional phone developed by German designer can stimulate heavy breathing, hand-holding, and kissing. This is kind of like the sex thing. That people, it's the thing with the, that I've been talking about. It's a moisturized, it's a US- wet sponge membrane. I don't want my phone <laughs> kissing me. I'm already too attached to my phone. If I start making out with my phone, I've got a problem. Yeah, well, Rebecca, you know, your lover just gives you a little, a little peck on the cheek. And then you could feel it? With your phone. What's wrong with that? People love, sweet. love their partners. God. People Can't are calling it creepy, it? awkward, disgusting, and disturbing. We're talking a lot about love today. I know. But it was funny. My friend called me like literally in tears. Like, what does love mean? I need to know the meaning of love. We are talking about love today. Love is, love is a beautiful thing when you can find it. Uh, yeah. So, love is when you can, you'll do anything for that person. Yeah, you do anything for them. They got your back. I think it yeah. sounds nice. It this does. Love thing. You should try it out. I should. I'm yeah, going to. It's fun. I'm going to, for sure. I'm when it goes bad, it goes bad, but then you just live and you learn and yeah. then you move on. I think I just t- always held back a little bit. I was a little shut down. Yeah. I don't know. But I did yeah. fall in love, like, yeah, when I was 22. Yeah. Tequila always tears down that wall. Tequila Then you amazing. love everybody. I can't remember my te- Oh, I should bring yeah. my tequila recipe tonight and make margaritas. Yeah, you should. But I can't remember what it was. You. It was the one thing I made yeah, for menace. I remember you. It was agave, you, and I had to heat it up. Yeah, but yeah, you diluted the agave a little Three bit. Three parts, so it to wasn't one as part. sugary. Yeah, right. It was amazing. And then what else do you put in it? And then you the put margarita. In lime. Yeah, lime. lime. Done. I'll That's do that. It. What about the? You can bring in the panty dropper. I told you the panty dropper. Oh, we were all drinking that the other night. Really? Yeah. Didn't I tell you that yesterday? Yeah, you did. But you did it. You did the recipe wrong. You have to use lime, not lemon. I didn't remember that. Yeah. But um, I love the panty dropper, too. Ginger ale, <laughs> vodka, and lime. Uh-huh. And grenadine, maybe. Grenadine, if you, if you want to make a true panty dropper. Menace, you've really changed my life. I teach you all about sex, <laughs> and you teach me all about how to become an alcoholic. It's yes. It's awesome. I know. That's really... I better your life. What did you say? I better your you life. You do better my life every okay. day. I get excited to see you. <laughs> um, okay, we have a new poll that I'm going to get into now. Have you ever had a threesome? No, but I'd like to. Yes, but it was not fun. <laughs> No, not my thing. Yes, and I'm excited for my next one. I think it's number one. No, but I'd like to. Huh? Number one yeah. for you? I, I think number one is like, no, but I would like to, yeah. That's what you would say for you? Yeah. Okay. So It's been go there. Vote. It's been that close. I know, close. honey. I can help you. But sometimes you just get, you know, it's too late in the night to make it happen. It's too late. You're too yeah. drunk. It's like about yeah. to happen. Yeah. No, but you'd still like to. Oh, we got to hook that up for you. Um, I want people to go vote on this right now. It's very important because we are going to be talking about that because a big impetus today. So just to tease what's coming up later is it's confessions from a sexual intern at her first sex party. And there was a lot of talk about perhaps they would have a threesome there. We don't know what happened yet. Mm -hmm. We're going to find out. So um, and they hadn't had one before. So have you ever threesome? Nobody would like to. Yes, but it was not fun. Not my thing. Yes. And I'm excited for my next one. I'd have to say yes. And I'm excited for my next one. (laughs) <laughs> all right. I like um, how your your answers are all the way at the bottom. Mine's all the way at the top. I know. We're just like that. We're different like that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do you want some? Um, can I give you some emails? Yeah. My favorite part. I know. Okay. And then after that, we're going to read the winners to our contest, what you'd give up for great sex. All right. Special present from Adam and Eve. Emily, do women admire or criticize each other's labia? As in... Her lips are so pretty or small or dainty or her lips are a mess. I know that some women are self-conscious about their own labia, which makes me think that there are some aesthetic criteria. Do plastic surgeons have neoprene models of different labial models for women seeking labioplasty? Are you looking for the Jenna Jenna Jameson style or the Natalie Portman look? As a guy, I have some standards, but they are rather 
but they are limit, but they are limits rather than exact specifics. For example, prolapse innards is too much, and prebutal pre, pre slits are not enough. Prebutal mm-hmm. slits. Um, he knows way too much. Wow. He knows more than I do. Why Other is a guy that, asking this? They are distinctive, interesting, whatever, cute, impressive, exotic from Alex. I don't understand okay. why Alex would be asking if other women Because he's talk. clearly obsessed with labias, and uh-huh. he wants to know if women talk about other women's labias, and I, I don't. I yeah. don't talk to my friends. I've never had a friend complain to me about her labia. I but never. Maybe, and my friends and I talk about everything. Yeah, all my uh, girls that are friends, they have never brought it, that up. No, ever. I think that's really like, that's like a man talking about his penis size. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. Like, so my labias. <laughs> yeah. Uh, flapping in the wind. Yeah, I don't uh, talk about my penis size with my right. friends. I don't think that women <laughs> I mean, do. That maybe like a really close friend, she'd be like, I'm thinking of getting the surgery. And if you're talking about do plastic surgeons have neoprene models, I'm assuming they do because for any other, like if you get a boob job, they you feel different boobs. You get a nose job, they show you different. No, it's like I I'm think s- I think he's probably trying to get one of those. He wants. Do you want Natalie Portman's labia <laughs> mod- uh, a uh, mold of her labia? Is that what you're asking for? No, I don't think women talk about it that much. I think that men talk about it more than women. Remember, we don't talk this. We don't talk. But in you detail think like it. That. You're like, oh, that's a weird labia. Yeah. You, you've run into weird labias, right? Yeah. There's I've ones never out there. thought I'm about. I'm not gonna comment on labia be because I've done we, that we before. We did it once and it was and bad. People... We got hundreds of emails and people were not happy. <laughs> Menace insulted a woman's labia, and <laughs> I don't know. We almost had to cancel the show. It was it raged more than the handoff debate. I think for a yeah. while. Um, I think that men. There was a woman who wrote in a few weeks ago about her labia and she was thinking surgery, and then someone else wrote in and was like, you know what? Labias, all labias are beautiful. Like some men like big labias. So I think it's like if you're really uncomfortable with it, it's inhibiting your sex life, then maybe you should, you know, look into that. But I just think like really just kind of accept and love your body. It's yeah. fine. Men, people will love it too. You'll find someone who loves your labia just the way it is. Yeah. It's up to you. Right. Don't take into consideration. And think in about it long enough. If you're young too, like plastic surgery, I think at a young age, even an older age, but just like. I don't know. Learn to love your labia. All right. Emily, I've been hanging out with this girl for three weeks now. She just ended things with her ex about six weeks ago. Now, how long till I say I want more or just go for it and try to get more out of it? We have so much fun going out with people we know, but I want more. Is there anything I can say to tell her or let her know I want more? From Kennewick, Washington, 25 years old, Pete. No. Okay. She (laughs) just ended it with her ex three weeks, six weeks ago. Mm -hmm. How long till you say you want more or just go for it? Well... Okay, this is tricky. I say he's 25 years old. He's hanging out with this chick. Just go for it. I mean, she probably has some mourning period, but when you're 25, six weeks is, you know. How long was she with that guy before, does it say? No. Okay. They could have been together 12 weeks. Who knows? Not very long. Yeah. I mean, if they're together for like a couple of years, she might answer like, oh, I want to have fun right now. I'm going to go party with my girls and get crazy and drink martinis right. and cry in the street and with my heels, my heels off. In the dirty street, I see that all the time. What? At, at night around oh, here, women city. without their heels. Yeah, because the feet they hurt. Yeah, you can get those soles to put them in, the, in there. I know, I have them. I always forget <laughs> to put them in. But it's it's just funny because it, it sucks as a man because you know, like you're a good guy, you'll take care of her, and you would do anything for this girl because you really, really like her. Right. But she wants to have that party phase because she's been locked down all this right. stuff. She's gonna go through all this turmoil. And it's going to suck. Right. And he and is then, the rebound guy, Pete. You are the rebound yeah. guy. She just broke up with him. But I would say just hanging out and being friends and, and mm-hmm. not letting her know that you like her is going to put you into the friend zone. So yeah. that's your other danger. I you always don't do. You want to go in the friend zone because it's a very dark place and it's hard mm-hmm. to get out. You can't get out. can't get yeah. out sometimes. I, I also say you do have to say something. Um, but I would consider some time frame because it's only six, eight weeks ago that they broke up. And... Like, consider how long they were together. If they were only right. together, like, a year, then, yeah, go ahead and go right. for it. But if they're in a relationship of, like, four years, then, right. dude, right. you got to... that takes a little more time. You got to give her a little breathing room. Right. But you can still try to make out with her one night when you're really drunk. <laughs> no, that never That's works. That's just kidding, though. But that could lead down... A, I don't know why I said that. That's not the thing you'd say. Hi, Emily and Madison. <laughs> am, I gonna, am I starting to, like, get corrupted by you? No. That's I'm making horrible. you more real. I'm real, dude. I'm bringing you come. down to earth. Emily and Menace, I was catching up on your show from a week ago, and you said one phrase that really grabbed my attention. I am not a slut. Bros before hoes. 
What? I am not a slut. Apparently, oh, I said okay. I am not a slut. I'm a 23 year old female, lost her virgin at 18, and have had about 15 partners, give or take a couple drunken one night stands. I don't feel bad about this, but I know that if guys find this out, they always seem to think I'm a huge slut. Why is it that by having a healthy sex life, I'm or any female declared a slut? I know that this is probably one of the oldest questions in the book and can be answered in a million different ways. But sometimes it still gets under my skin. I have to say that listening to your show made me feel so much better with my healthy sex life. Thank you for reminding men and women that it's okay to have sex and try new things and talk about it. You and Menace are great. Keep the good work, Suzanne. Uh, yeah, you're so not a slut. And first of all, don't be talking to men about how many people you've slept with, yeah. ever. No. Never, ever, ever reveal your number. I don't care how old you are, how many men you've slept with, low, low high. It's never, ever bodes well for any conversation, for any relationship to discuss the number of partners you have. Guys mm-hmm. will always ask. Women will always ask. And all, it's going to end up in a fight. Mm-hmm. They're, they're going to be judging you. If it's too too few, too many, it's just, it's no one needs to know but yourself. So stop talking about it because if they're it, judging you, they're going to judge you. Yeah. It's just automatically going to ruin your relationship. <laughs> Never talk about Exactly. Automatically. Never talk about the number. And if they keep on pressing you and pressing you, don't, don't. Never give it reveal. Up. It's not. Move it's, on. It's, I don't see any scenarios where it's like, oh, I'm so glad I know that now. I feel so much closer to you. No, yeah. I feel like you've had 15 other dicks and that's all I can think about. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like it clouds their vision when men hear about other penises. They just picture all those other penises in the room. Mm-hmm. Clouds their vision. I ain't about it. Okay. So that's all we got for emails right now because we have to move into the contest winner. And then we have to move into our – my. I'm so excited to talk to my intern about her sex party. I can't right, stand good. it. Okay. So our contest was what would you give up for amazing sex? And then here's some of our responses before I read the winner. Uh-huh. Okay. Amanda says – this is all from Facebook. We put uh, cheesecake and booze. However, I prefer to have, I prefer to have all three. Someone else said, uh, Dervion said, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Rachel said, chocolate and 10 pounds. Amber says, dessert. Women are so food focused, right? Cho- mm-hmm. I think I said chocolate. Natalie said, read in and write in. David said, my left nut. So yeah. All the things people give up for good sex. Rebecca said, I would have to say alcohol. While some believe alcohol helps to re- relieve any anxiety over intimate situations, and el- eliminating it means you feel everything. Travis says, hours of my day or sleep. John says football, NFL football for the rest of his life, but only if it isn't a one-time thing. So he has to have great sex all the time. <laughs> okay. Right. So another guy says, Joker said from Waterloo, he said, what would I give up for great sex? I gave up two things, my car and masturbating. His car and masturbating. For great sex. That's a good one. David said, beer on a day, beer <laughs> on a day for a day basis. Seriously, the only way to have really great sex is to give up yourself. Aw. Keith said, I'd give up my sight. I could still bask in the intimacy with the sound touch, breathing the scent of sex, and the miracle that happens as I regain my sight. That's beautiful. <laughs> okay, someone else said, a giant load of cum. Oh, okay. Thanks. Classy. Someone else said, bad sex. I would give up my car for some great sex. Okay. And then someone else said, they give up flirting, but I haven't read the winner yet. <laughs> what is the winner? The winner said, before I tell you what I would give up, for guaranteed amazing sex, I have to say that Sex with Emily is my favorite podcast. I listen to it religiously every day, and I became a Friends with Benefits member the minute it was an option. That being said, I would give up Sex with Emily for a month if I was guaranteed good sex. <gasps> Please don't hate me. <laughs> Nikki from Potomac, Maryland. She wins. A special prize from Adam and Eve. She's just com. kissing your ass. I loved it. Kiss Jeez. my ass. See, you love and the attention. You just number. eat it. That's how you Yay. survive. That's you don't even have food in your, That's why you don't have food in your house. Why? Because you just live off attention. <laughs> that's, that's what you feed off Sorry. of. That's what you feed off of is attention. That's, that's how so you survive. True, that is so not true. How's I love attention. True? There's no food but in your honey, goddamn that house. That was funny. That was well written. I just read them all to you. Mm-hmm. Before I would tell you, I have to say that I thought that was funny. She's like, I'd give up sex only for a month. That's funny. I would have picked the cum one. Load it come, <laughs> dad, load it come, yeah. whatever. Okay. Bring a dumb truck. Dumb truck. So, Nikki, you won a prize from Adam and Eve, our sponsor, adamandeve.com. We're going to oh. send you something uh, that oh. vibrates and that's phallic shaped, probably, likely. Mm-hmm. I don't know. They're picking the prize. But, um, yeah, Adam and Eve, just so FYI, if you're looking to buy sex toys or you're looking to do anything, uh, buy any rings or lingerie or DVDs, sex, adamandeve.com is your place to go. You get three adult DVDs plus free shipping. Plus 50% off one item, plus all this other stuff. So just use coupon code Emily at checkout for adamandeve.com. Do that now. 
Okay. So what the hell happened? What is going on? Explain everything from the beginning with our intern. Okay. Let's step from over the beginning. Here. Alicia, what happened? Get your cute little butt over here. Get Hello. the. Get the uh, microphone. Is it okay that she's standing face. and I'm sitting, or should I stand? Uh, I don't mind standing. Uh, let me see. No, that's cool. I got I it. I could stand. I got it. No, it's perfect. Right here. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. I don't Hi, even guys. have any notes. Hi, this Hi, is Alicia. On. She's hold been on, an Alicia. intern. Okay, I'll give you the. We'll give you hold the on. background. Okay. You don't talk for a second. Go ahead and talk. Hello. Okay. A little closer. bit. A little bit. Uh, no, you're you're cool. You can I'm, stand up a little bit. Okay. 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 Right there. You're perfect. Don't talk and just stand right there and talk. Okay. Cool. Okay, awesome. <laughs> Hi, lovely Alicia, my intern. Okay, Hi. so Alicia's been my intern for how long now? Only a couple of months. Co- okay, a couple of months. Yeah. Like two months? Yeah, Already? since like the end of July. Okay, end of July. And um, so she asked me, so what happened was, I don't really remember, tell me what happened. You asked well, me. Well, I was trying to plan okay, my go ahead. boyfriend's 25th birthday, and I wanted to do something a little bit different, because we have a really healthy sexual lifestyle, <laughs> and I wanted to have a threesome. I know. I knew he always wanted to have one. I've always wanted to have one. So I was trying okay, to plan. Okay, two chicks and a guy, or two guys. No, two <laughs> girls and a guy. Okay, cool. that'd be weird. I know. Yeah, yeah. It's not um, as hot. Always, you guys <laughs> talked about the threesome thing then before. Yeah, we okay. had. Um, so I was trying to surprise him at something special, and then Emily was like, "Hey, why don't you guys go to Club Kiss?" Because I was having problems thinking of like how to find another girl. Right. So and like Club just, Kiss is there was a woman on the show, Polly. I don't think you were here. Polly mm-hmm. runs. Polly Emery. <laughs> no, but her name is Polly. Polly. Witcher, Polly something. Anyway, Polly owns this club in the city called Club Club Kiss in San Francisco, and they do all these. It's not really a sex party, but they call them play parties. Mm-hmm. And you can go, and the rules are that it's couples and single women can go, and they mm-hmm. never they don't tell you the location until that day, and it's somewhere in the city. And um, so she came on the show and talked about throwing sex parties, and so I thought I had the brochure, and I was like, okay, check it out. So we. Uh, Called Polly. Polly hooked it up, mm-hmm. got her in, and um, yeah. So I want to know. And then her boyfriend also, D- Daniel. Yep. Daniel. He's gonna. Should we call him now? He's just gonna sit so we can listen and kind of uh, yeah, we're good? pipe in. You yeah, we're good. Okay. I mean, I think we'll still keep talking. Just get him on the phone. But mm-hmm. so I want to know how it all done because he didn't know you were. Pl- you guys had talked about everything. Yeah, I had been teasing him for a couple of weeks saying like, I planned something crazy for your birthday. Like you're not going to believe it. You're never going to forget this. Mm-hmm. And he had just started assuming that it was going to be a threesome. Oh, he assumed it. Yeah. He assumed okay. it was going to be a threesome. Hello. Hello? Uh, Is he there? He's hey. here. Oh crap. Hang on one sec. Okay. Hold on. Oh, she doesn't have oh, headphones. Yeah. Do we have an extra set? Hello. Oh, oh, hi. Hey. So, oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let me Hold see on those. honey. Hi. Can you hear us? Yes. Okay. Hi, Daniel. We're going to have you sit there for a second. We're just going to hook up some headphones here for Alicia. Totally should remember okay. that. Hold on one second. Hold on. Can, um, Daniel, uh, can you just not comment right now and you guys can talk? Yeah, we're going to keep talking, stuff. Daniel, but we just wanted to get you on the line. Okay, so no anyway, so, so all week long you're saying to him, all month long, you're like, I've got something, I've got something, I've got something. Yeah, thinking, I've had this plan for like a month. Okay. <laughs> okay, and you he, guys don't have... You guys, just look at the microphone. Okay. Sorry. So he thinks that... Because I want everybody to hear this. So he thinks, <laughs> he, he, how do you, he says to you, I think it's a threesome. Yeah, because I was like, what are, you, what are you assuming that it's going to be? Like, I just want to know to see if he's on track at all. Okay. And he was assuming it was a threesome. And then it wasn't till the night before we were out at a bar. And I was like, I really want to tell you. I feel like I should just let you know now. Because it kind of is like a big surprise. Right, big. And so I told him. And he was definitely really excited, but nervous, of right, course. Right, right. How did you tell him? Like, what did you say? I'm going. To, we're going to this play party or we're going to this... Yeah, I said we're going to an underground sex club. I love it. We're going <laughs> to an underground sex club. I'm just going to give you my headphones and let you guys talk because oh, but menacing won't have... be able to hear. It's Wait, okay. how about if I share? No, no, no. no. <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll figure it out. You guys okay. go ahead and keep on talking. Okay, because you have to be able to hear. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and so, okay. So he was a little nervous, and then you guys went. Okay. So then you go. Did you guys talk beforehand about, like, did you set... Because one of the big things for people is that they have to... I always tell couples when they're going to uh, their first sex party or planning their first threesome that you have to talk about it beforehand. You have to establish ground rules. For example, like, I don't want you kissing someone, but I want you to... You can have sex, but I don't, I don't want... You know, we, I don't want to take the person home or whatever it is. No, definitely. We really had to talk about that. Smart. Um, 
we brought up the whole what if a, a guy approaches me situation and I let him know that like that's really not what I'm going there for that's not on my agenda if it does happen I'll just let them know like I'm really only here for your girl if we th- both think that she's cute right yeah um and then the whole issue of like okay you can be with the girl but only as long as I'm there Right. You know, like, no running away. You know, I want to know where you're at at all no times. No running to the back room. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Got it. Um, but also just, we have really great communication. So I was like, Sounds like just, it. Yeah. I was like, we trust each other. We love each other. Just, like, communicate with me. Let me know when it, whenever you're not feeling comfortable. If you do see someone that you think is cute, if you want to do anything different, you know, like, just talk to me. Right. And that's what we did. And so were you worried that you were going to be jealous or anything? Because it's a lot of things that come up. I figured if I was there, no. Right. If I was participating them. also, then no. Okay. If it was just like, I didn't want to have a moment to take, like, to step back and to see him right. with another woman for a second. Because I think he's incredibly sexy and I just want to, like, see him wow, do his thing. right. But I never got to that point. Oh, it didn't get to that point. Okay. Well, we'll get to that in a minute. Daniel, are you, can you hear me? I'm still here. Hi, Daniel. Hey. Thank you so much Hi. for calling in. You're awesome. So what did you think when Alicia said, we're going to this underground sex club tomorrow? What was your first thought? Oh, um, Kind of like two things, just super excited and super nervous at the same time. Yeah. And then you I'm know. crazy. Yeah, she's crazy I, awesome. She really is. Isn't she? <laughs> I know, right? So um, so you were kind of nervous, then you guys had the conversation and stuff, and so you've never had a three. neither one of you have ever had a threesome before, right? I never have. No, I have not. Okay. So you get, so then you do that, and then what happens? You go to get to the party. Is it working? No. Okay, you go to the party. Yeah. We got to the party, and um, we got, like, a little tour of the area, just okay. kind of, like, the different rooms and the setup um, and what people were going to be doing just so, you know, we weren't kind of blindsided. Right. And um, I think Alicia and I just kind of looked at each other like, okay, this is where it's all going to happen, but we really had no idea what was going to happen. Right. So, What was the scene like? Can you describe the um, the, the rooms? Um, they had a couple, they had two or three different rooms. Um, one in the back was kind of like large with lots of beds laid out. Um, one was kind of a dungeon setting, which was okay. interesting. A dungeon, right? Dungeons um, are big. And then two or smaller rooms, which kind of were just like different colored drapes and couches and low lighting. And they had okay. a DJ and a dance floor with a stripper pole, which was cool. Of course. You guys can't have a sex party without a stripper <laughs> pole. And then what were people dressed like, you guys? would? Pretty normal. Like, there is some people that were in lingerie, some people were in dresses, some people were just in jeans and t-shirts. Like, okay. it was whatever you felt comfortable in. So, did you guys, like, check out, scope out other couples? Were you, kind you just, of, yeah. But you I don't know, Dan, were you looking around more than I was? Honestly, I, I my eyes were really just focused on you. I just wanted oh. to make sure we were okay. I think, like, so the whole idea of going was to try it. Uh, we oh, lost we just I just wasn't, I wasn't oh, ready to actually approach someone until, right. I think we both had maybe thought that somebody would approach us. Right. And we realized it's kind of, you got to, you got to be a little bit open about it. Yeah. Well, you learn, you know, you learn. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I guess you do have to start approaching. Did you start talking to other couples and well, stuff? Well, yeah, we were definitely being a little social. Like at first when we got there, we kind of just made our way like to a couch and just were talking and making out a little bit. Right. And we got on top of him. But when it came to trying to communicate with other people, we were really just talking. We weren't really flirting. Right. And so we were surprised when we It's a whole meet. different art form, yeah, I guess. Yeah. We'd be surprised when we would meet people and see them talking to other people and seeming like they were having normal conversations and then see them having a foursome 20 minutes later. Oh, really? So yeah. tell me about that. Tell me about what you saw there. We saw lots and lots of sex. So but like what? But it wasn't like... It it's not like in your face sex, right? Kind of, yeah. Oh, no, it is. Okay, like good. Tell me a, everything. You walk in a room and you see a girl on her knees, you know, sucking on a guy. and Right. Naked? Yeah. Uh, no, that girl wasn't naked. But then, like, in, like, the big playroom, everyone was naked. And so, wow. should we talk about what we did? Should we get Yeah, the- <laughs> go, of course. <laughs> so Dan braved it, and we found some a little back corner space in the, one of the largest rooms there. And... And to our left, there was a foursome, and right in front of us, there was a foursome. What do you mean there was a foursome? There was so, two. There was were they two all, couples together? So, so, so they were, but so they weren't all having sex. The foursome, they were swapping. So, um, so I, like in, I don't think so. I, oh, yeah. I feel like couples remain couples. It was just kind of 
what I really liked about this club what it was I think it's more girl inspired swapping. Yes, Not really it is girls. It's swapping. all about the women. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I never saw couples really swapping their guys. I think it was just girls were really into each other and the guys were just having fun watching their having girls be together. Watching their girls play with other girls. Oh, yeah. right. Like the, there was a a foursome in front of us. They seemed to be having a lot of fun with each other. Um, so there was a guy that was doing his girlfriend from the back, and then she was eating out a girl in front of her. And then the woman who was getting eaten out, her husband was just laying there next to her, just being like, okay, like, when are you going to start playing with me? But she right. was just, like, enjoying herself and was just, like, taking it all So in. he was just lying there going, who's going to suck me? No, but he no. was he had a he giant smile it. on his face. You know, That's like, so sweet. Yeah. And then to our left, um, it was definitely more, there was no swapping there. Um, the girls were in the middle, and the guys were on the outside. And it was really just, like, the guys playing with the girls. And and the girls were playing with each other. Yeah. So there was a lot of female-on-female female action. Definitely. We never saw any guys. We never saw, like, any guys, like, kissing each other. Okay. No no men kissing each other. Yeah. Two men kissing each other. Okay. And not even really, like, anyone doing anything, like, it was more about, like, it was more passionate sex. It wasn't, like, girls getting pounded all right. over the place. Right. Passionate. That's hot. Yeah, no. So was, was it hot? Like, what did you did turn you guys on to watch these other couples having sex? How about you, Daniel? It, I really had to loosen up at first. Yeah, um, you need a few cocktails, huh? I yeah. Think what had happened is, is we we went to a room and just started to kind of turn each other on, basically. Right. And go back and, and then have some drinks. And before we knew it, honestly, when the dance floor was packed, everybody had left. All the rooms had filled up, and there was sex happening in every room. Wow. So, we weren't kind of there as people poured in, so as we walked around and looked in, we were both looking like, you know, this is actually happening. <laughs> right. like we're yeah, here. Like people are having sex at a sex party. Wow, that's awesome. Right. Like, um, that's kind of odd. We should do it. You should do it. So then you... So then we probed each other. It was like, we're here. We both know we're comfortable enough. We just need to relax. Right. And then... So she took my hand, and we went... We went to the furthest back room and kind of just had a view of the whole room, and she just sort of, she started on me and got me comfortable, so. Right, and then you... You started on me. (laughs) (laughs) Apparently, we had some watchers, too. Really? Oh, yeah, that's true. I'm sorry, I did. So you had people watching you guys, like, go down on each other kind of thing? Yeah, because there was a wall, so people could, like, stand along the back wall and just kind of, like, play with each other while watching other people. Okay. But I was always facing him. I kind of like you didn't want to see the people watching. Well, no, well it wasn't that. I just like I just wanted you wanted to, like, to connect with them. Yeah, exactly. I Daniel. just wanted it to be like just don't even th- realize that like everyone else is here. Like it's right. We're just having sex. Together. Exactly. Okay, that's really cool. So then you got it got comfortable. You get into it, right? Yeah. Well, like he got hard, we and it was time. It was time. And then you guys <laughs> had sex in the room. Did you get naked? Yeah, we were both fully naked. Wow. And 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 you know that people were around watching. Yeah, I, I mean, I found out later on. I mean, you found out. We were like, hey, that was nice. No, no, were... Dan told me afterwards. He's like, no, there was definitely yeah. some people. Like, Dan wow. got a high five from a guy. No way. <laughs> you got a high five? For yeah, what, I... Daniel? What'd you do? What was the move? Did he, did he specify what the high five was all about? I don't think it was that. It was just <laughs> the high five was basically like, oh, we had just met each other casually and then I just see you fucking your girlfriend right, right. Of, right. With another couple. So That's awesome. Um, you guys so you had I your think first Alicia was real focused on me and I kind of surveyed the room right. while we were having sex. And eventually that really started to turn me on that people were paying attention to us. It did turn you on that people were watching. Yeah, I'm sure. That's that can be really hot. Some people you know now you know something about yourself, right? You wouldn't have known that before. But it is kinda hot. I love it. We did just you? we did break a big wall, and I told her afterwards that I think we've totally kicked a notch up now. I in love the relationship. it. Not I, that we're just going to keep going for these kinds of things, but um, oh, I can the, open up a whole world for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just the level of she just started her internship. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> yeah, but just the level of trust. Yeah, you know, no, like, you said she said this morning to me when she came in. She's like, she feels like you guys are even closer now. I think so. I really do. Huh. I, we didn't we didn't do the threesome thing, and I think that wasn't for lack that, of her wanting to. I think it was maybe. Um, I just really didn't 
pursue it right like how i talked about it right so. and it's hard to do like it's it's hard to do threesomes don't they seriously like all the stars have to be aligned like it's not an easy thing to make happen but i think it's amazing that you guys had sex like i think it's almost better that you guys just went and had sex and did that with each other experience. yeah the next time you'll know more and more and it'll all happen yeah right. no we definitely we did that and then went and danced and definitely you're feeling a little bit of alcohol by then and the music was getting better, and then we even went and did it again. And like no one else was really around this time. Right. It was actually kind of funny. We walked in on a couple that were just playing with each other, and then we started having sex, and they just left. We we're like, okay, we don't know if we like scared them away. No, or, probably like, not at <laughs> a sex party. So, how many different couples would you say you saw having sex at this party? Ooh, I don't that know, one babe. Time? No, yeah, no, just throughout the evening. You mean switching or just no, just like couple. Like, how much sex acts did you? Is there like hundred? How many people were there? Oh, man. It was probably like 40, 50. Okay. That's kind of intimate. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and everyone was so nice. You definitely kept running into the same people like as soon as you go to the bathroom. Or right, right, right. Or drink or, okay. That's um, really cool, you guys. I think it's great that it really opened up your relationship and you feel closer now. Yeah. I'd say there was only about like really just a handful of people that weren't doing anything. Right. But most people get into it. Yeah. Like, because here, they went there. They're like, okay, we're going to go test this out. And, you know, there's always... There can be the chance that someone just really doesn't feel that comfortable. Right. And it's uh, the thing about Club Kiss, and if anyone wants to check it out, I think it's Club Kiss San Fran Club Kiss SF. Is their website Club Kiss SF or is it just Club Kiss? You can find yeah. it. But um, if anyone wants to check it out, they're a great club in the city and you can go there and it's safe. Didn't you feel safe? I felt really comfortable. They made but, us feel really comfortable. Yeah. Like as I had gone there and like a sexy red dress and like even changed in some lingerie that he'd bought in for I me. I love that you wore your lingerie there. <laughs> what did it look like? Um, it was cute. It was polka dotted and like see through on the sides and kind of looked like a little um, French maid. Oh, cute yeah. French maid. Daniel, good job. No, he's the best. Did you see, did you hear the lingerie? Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, well, thank You're you so much for showing. What'd you say? I, I pushed her to put it on, so she did. That is hot. See, it's good to push your limits like that. Yeah, why not? Now, what, what, so what's next? Who knows? We went to a strip club the next night, and it was like, oh, this is kind of boring. Strip club. <laughs> <laughs> what else? Yeah, because you guys hadn't been to a strip club before, right? Or you hadn't? I had never been Not before. together, no. Not together. Okay. Got it. Well, um, thank you so much, Daniel, for calling in. I appreciate it. Oh, I'm glad to talk about it. Thank you yeah, for, thank for you. helping us. Of course. Anytime. I'm here to help. People have better sex. <laughs> bye, Daniel. Happy birthday. Bye, baby. <laughs> Thank you so much. Bye, baby. I'll see you later. Oh, okay, you bye. You. Thanks, Alicia, so much. That was no a great problem. story. I love it. Okay, so any takeaways, any advice for people if they've never been, or what would you say? I'd say if you feel like you're with someone that you can do something like that with, then definitely go and give it a try. Just go check it out. Go check it out. Because there's everyone was so nice there. We really did feel comfortable. And we also, we told each other when we got there, like, we don't have to do anything. Right. It's totally fine. No pressure. We can no just pressure. No pressure. Yeah, no pressure. We can just get each other excited and leave and go and home and do and it in our... Sex and you had sex in the middle of the thing. I love it. Yeah. No. <laughs> it was awesome. They had sex in a room with people watching. I wow. know. Our first time was in a giant <laughs> group of people. And then we went to a smaller room. And then, of course, we went home and did it all night. Now, is That's that... Awesome. <laughs> now that, uh, I mean, you initially went there to have a threesome. That was kind of the plan. That was the plan. But then now that every the, ex, the experience ended up being everybody watching you, is that what you ended up getting off on? Or was that just... Kind of, yeah. Kinda, I mean, it, it was nice. To, like, oh, that's weird that I experienced that, but I liked it? Or No, I mean, it. it was kind of nice. Like, it was kind of like porn was on blast behind me. Like, you mm -hmm. just hear girls moaning throughout this whole, you know, venue. You're just kind mm -hmm. of like... I want to moan hot. too, you yeah. know? Yeah. <laughs> that's hot. Oh my God, I love it. Okay. <gasps> Yay. Thanks, Alicia. That's no awesome. No problem. Thank you, okay. Emily. Yeah. Emily. This is all her doing. <laughs> <laughs> and look, it enhanced their sex life. And it's enhanced the relationship, I mean. Yeah. Okay, so that's great. Okay, well, thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. I really think we're done here, right? Oh, yeah. We gotta yeah. Wrap up. We got to wrap up. Thanks, everyone, for listening to Sex with Emily. Was it good for you? Email me feedback at sexwithemily.com.